You know, primitive people, a lot of people say that don't take my picture, you're stealing. Wait, you're stealing my you're stealing, soul. You're stealing. In a sense, that's right. When you're, take, you're taking pictures, and when you're taking pictures, it gives you a control. Haskell Wexler, he's a Hollywood two-time Oscar-winning DP, but he also made his own documentaries um, throughout his career. So the last 10 years of his life, my husband Alan and I, uh, having been so inspired by him, decided we were going to hang out with him and make a film. You wanted to ultimately take what you shot here tonight and make it into uh, a little film. And this is a good example of you know how my my relationship to uh, my subjects has changed because the cameras now enable me to be able to s see people, relate to them. They can see my face. They can see what I'm feeling, um, and it's caused me to participate more. And then after you're cutting the film and so forth, you'll. You'll say uh, to me, Haskell, I'm who visited you. Haskell, do you still have that that blue shirt that you wore? Yeah, Wait a second. That. Let me ask you a question. And because you feel that your thing that you shot, if you had a scene of me coming through that door, scratching my balls or something, you know, would you think that that would really give a, a, a profound meaning, a meaning to this film that you shot? six months before, you wouldn't ask me to do it? Absolutely, would not. I would. Never. That was the day that Haskell was running to be president of the IA union. So he and I had gotten up really early in the morning to go down to the polling stations. Uh, Chris Hegedus, uh, who's married to D.A. Pennybaker, and their friend Nick Doob were in town uh, trying to get a, a film together. So they had been out shooting, and we all came together in the evening, and I filmed for three hours, and that alone could be a film. Because it's just another piece of artifice that you've done, just as, just as you've decided what focal length to be on at this but very moment. But it's irrelevant. Moment. It's, it's, it's irrelevant, ask. I'm constantly working with people who are, you know, they're not really sophisticated in, in terms of the media, and um, I don't want to make them feel that they're in a movie. And any time you ask people to walk through a door again or change their clothing or start over, I think it works against what I'm trying to do. And uh, that's the other reason I, I feel so strongly uh, negatively about interviews, uh, because I think people become very presentational. A relaxed three or four of us, or how many, were just sitting here uh, more tired than we may be acting, like I started very early this morning. Therefore, I'm speaking to you in an animated, younger than 85-year-old manner because I don't want to be perceived as an old fucking cameraman. <laughs> What's reality? I don't know if you've seen Nick Broomfield's films, but Nick will start rolling when we knock on the door. And we've kind of done the interview by the time we get a cup of coffee. People are expecting that we're going to come in. We'll, they'll give us coffee. We'll have a little chat. We'll set the lights up. And we'll put the flower pot and the flag behind the desk. And then we'll start the interview. But. Uh, I think you learn so much more about people, and it's much more interesting if you catch them kind of being who they are naturally. If you need a shot of me walking out to cut in for some other scene, that's fine. <laughs> Just give me, give me an action. Kill, kill the walker. Okay. okay. Actually, you might not have the right shirt on. Adios, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Good night.